Hey, everyone. Welcome to the She's the Owner podcast. My name is Kara McCarran, and I'm your host. And this is episode 81. Um, so a couple of things. Happy New Year. Um, I know I've done some podcasts since the, the beginning of the year, but um, I'm pretty excited about what's about to happen for, for the brand and for you and for me and for everybody. So <clears throat> um, just a heads up, I'm in Toronto. I rented an Airbnb so that I could come here and do some filming and do some podcasting and um, not disturb the rest of my family. My daughter's home again with the lockdown. So a bit challenging for sure. Um, And so here I am. So if you hear any sirens or crazy shit behind me, it's Toronto. What can I say? Um, So Couple of couple of things that I wanted to chat about. There's you're going to notice a lot more business related content. So why is that? Um, I've come to realize last year was you know I've talked a lot about clarity and I've talked a lot about how things um, how I found 2020 to be really helpful to me. Um, of course I you know there's been a lot of bad shit and a lot of stress. Um, we're not going to even kind of go that down that road, but for me there was a lot of clarity and one of the things that came up or the biggest thing that came up. Um, and part of it is I'm also learning in a six, six week or sorry, six figure accelerator mastermind that I'm in, which is unbelievable. And I hope to create something, um, as good as that, because it is the best thing I've ever spent my money on when it comes to programs. Um, and I do spend money on programs. You know, that I go to a lot of Tony Robbins events. I mean, it's, it's not a live event. I'm not saying that, but in terms of different things that I've done, it's incredible. So what I've created is called the She's the Owner Accelerator Program. It's 90 days. And we're going to go through three main sections, business, mindset work, and then execution. So often when, and so I'm just going to touch on each of the three things, really, really high level, like 40,000 foot view. And then, um, you know, I'll wrap it up. I just want to give you a heads up that this is really going to shift more into a business conversation over the next little while with the masculine feminine energy mixed in, because I don't believe you can run a business purely in your masculine. I couldn't, and I don't know any other woman who can successfully do it and feel fulfilled at the same time, right? So yes, you can be in hunter mode all of the time for sure but you will burn out. Your body will burn out. Your emotions will burn out. Your adrenals will burn out. Your cortisol will go crazy. All of the things that make you unwell will happen if you are only in hunter mode, which is the masculine energy. So uh, definitely that is still the, um, I would say like the center of what I talk about, but I am definitely going to be talking more about business as things move forward. So let's get started. Business plans. So you know, there's the intro, there'll be an intro to business. So what's your vision, right? I mean, the, the, the biggest failure, I think, so I'll back it up in case there's some of you who haven't heard of me or, or looked into what I do and all that kind of heard of me. That sounds pretentious, but you know what I mean? Um, I've started five businesses in my day. I started my first business when I was 23. It was an event planning company in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I did um, a course called the Winnipeg Self-Employment Program, and it was amazing. It was just what I needed at the time. I knew very little about business. I knew that I didn't want to work for someone else. I'd had jobs before that. And so this little program really taught me how, you know, just very, very, very basic, like, um, you know, a bit of accounting, where to get your business cards printed, websites weren't even a thing yet. So that wasn't, wasn't really on the table, but it was, you know, it was all right. Like it did its job. So I started a few businesses. None of them did much, you know, they paid the bill. So I guess I can't say they didn't do anything, but definitely not what the vision I had was for what I wanted to accomplish. Um, the next business I had was another, uh, was my first marketing company called advertising solutions. And I had that with a partner, Anna, um, and that's going way back, but we did do websites. We did do logos. We did a branding, copywriting, um, all that kind of stuff. And then it just branched out from there. I started, um, my own agency when I moved to Toronto, which was called balance advertising solutions. And we did copywriting, branding, logo design, SEO, pay-per-click, all of it. Uh, I've had a business in um, 
what's it called? Uh, organic gift baskets. I'm very much into organic living and uh, not using natural products whenever possible. And there was nothing on the market. So I started a little basket company. You know, I got a few good orders. Still wasn't a thing for me. I, I wasn't passionate enough about it to move it forward. And then what else did I do? Um, what else was there? Oh, I had a foodie box, the foodie box, which is still an app um, I created. And now it's challenging. Maybe now is actually a good time, but I'm not even going to go there. So what's the pattern? The pattern is I didn't have a vision. And then, sorry, we did start the content company six years ago, and that's a successful six figure company. Um, multiple six figures. We've, you know, done over 2 million in sales. Uh, that's higher now, probably in the last handful of years that we've had the company um, five years. So it's done well. We had a whole team of writers um, and then COVID, you know, arrived and our business definitely took a huge hit. I just did the numbers today and it was painful to look at it. So there's some pivoting that needs to happen there. Um, but first of all, notice how calm I am about that. Like when I initially saw it, you know, kind of at the end of the, of the year numbers, I, I felt like crying, you know, we did double, double last year. So just sit with that for a second. And I know my business is teeny tiny compared to someone like Tony or somebody like, you know, any of the major restaurant chains, all that type of thing. But for us, half is half, right? That means half the writers got work this year. That means that we didn't um, produce what we thought, you know, we didn't produce, we did less, half is as less, half fewer orders than we did last year. So it's, um, but the, the, what, what's the point here, right? It's mindset. So when you're thinking about starting your business, you can't think about, you can't think about your website. You can't think about the brand colors. You can't think about your logo. You can't think about any of that shit until you know your why. Like the reason I didn't succeed with all those other small businesses, because my why was nothing. I had no why. I was good at marketing, still am. And it was going to make money. So that's why I did it. It was not a situation where I was like, I'm so passionate about gift baskets. Or I'm so passionate about whatever. It, it was, this makes sense in my head, so I'm going to do it. And so my why was never big enough. It was never important enough to me. Now, when I was doing it, part of, part of there was a why, it just wasn't big enough. But part of the why and why I do these um, white label type of companies with content and, and branding and logos, because I really do believe that there's, there was at least in the, um, you know, 2010s, uh, a lot of gouging that was happening. So you could get somebody who is incredibly talented, who worked for themselves to charge you, let's say, you know, a thousand or $1,500 for a really beautiful logo, which they feel good about being paid. Cause that's the amount of time they spent on. And you go downtown to any major city and it's 10 times that. And like, that's just not fucking cool to me. Right. Like I don't, I don't discount, I don't discount the work that goes into it, but I also don't think there's an, an, a need to gouge, like even in content writing, right? Like we have all North American writers, they're highly skilled. The quality of our content is bar none. We don't charge $500 a blog, we charge 65. Actually, we charge 70 now in, in the new year. Sorry, there was some background noise, so I had to pause. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, for, for me, it was starting these businesses was really just doing really good work for not a crazy amount of money, not charging 500 bucks a blog post, you know, our, our prices are, are what they are, but um, prices are what they are and they're fair and, and you get really good quality work. But that's, so that was a why, but it wasn't big enough for me um, for the small businesses. Now for the content company, here's really what's interesting is I know, and, and this might happen in a different way, but I know that I'm able to scale that company to seven figures. I, the business model works. Um, the quality is really good. Like we have the process down with our eyes closed. I spend very little time on that business. Every, every it runs without me now. So, um, you know, like if I wanted to grow it to seven figures, I really could. Why haven't I? Why have for four, probably three or four years, have I had the thoughts and the conversations? I've even written plans and I've done it all. Why did I not, why was I not able to stick to it? And to me, it's really simple. And this is, I would say, um, more for women, but it's for both, but more for women 
because I didn't have a compelling enough reason why. Like I did, I just don't, you know, I'm anytime, like I just wouldn't do the work required. And that's like the first thing when I talk to women about business or people about business in general, the first thing is you must have a compelling why, or you're not going to execute because what you don't know, if you're brand new to business and you've never owned a company before, what you don't know is it's fucking hard. It is really hard. And you have to have, you have to have the stomach to handle it. So what does that mean? Well, you've got to be willing to work 16 hours a day for the first couple of years, even in some cases. Um, you have to do all the stuff yourself. You have to do the accounting yourself, the branding yourself, the content creation, the sales, all of it. You know, whether if you're purchasing, you've got to do the purchasing. If you're creating, you've got to do the creating. So like everything is really on your shoulders for the first bunch of years. Like don't get it twisted. It's not six months and you hand it off to people. You might be a unicorn and you might have help, but really, truly it's, you know, two, three years in before you really can start hiring unless you've had a business already, in which case you'd know all this shit anyway. But if you don't have a compelling enough reason why you're doing it, it's, I promise you, promise you, promise you, you will fail because it's like a baby, right? Like the reason we don't quit on our children is because they're our children. We love the shit out of them. So the late nights, the poopy diapers, the puking, the, all of that stuff is totally tolerable because they're so friggin' cute and we love them so much. But if you don't have a vision and or a compelling why, I promise you, it's just not going to happen. It, you might be excited right now. You might be thinking, holy shit, I have this really good idea, but I'm telling you, it's just not going to stick if you don't have a compelling why. And that's true for men, but it's more true for women. Um, so another thing we're going to chat about is branding, right? So um, I, I wouldn't call myself, well, I mean... I'm, I'm well-versed in branding. I wouldn't call myself a branding expert, but I would definitely say I'm well-versed in it. And what do I look for when I'm creating a brand? I look for feel first. It depends on what I'm creating, but people aren't interested in what you sell just because you sell it. They are connecting with you. And I think if 2020 has shown us anything, um, I mean, it's shown us a whole bunch, but if it's really, you know, if you're really wanting to look for something that's sort of more tangible, it's, it's shown us that people want authenticity beyond everything else. So, you know, people get caught up. There's millions, literally millions, probably of coaches, if not millions, maybe several hundred thousand. There's only one Kara. There's only one you, there's only one, you know, this person and this person. So I can get caught up in, oh my gosh, you know, um, how am I going to make it? How am I going to get clients? Because there's so many, there's so much competition. Well, there's really not, there's really, really not. And my brand is where I get to be who I am. And obviously you want to keep professional. Obviously you want to, you know, but like I curse, it's a thing. I say fuck quite a bit. And that's part of my brand. I'm a gentle lioness. My, one of my coaches and I came up with the loving lioness, but I will kick your ass too. And that's part of my brand. And I've, and so what's really cool is, especially if you're the brand, it's really, really straightforward. Now, if you're not, and you're, you're selling, you know, um, I'm going to do a little plug here for my girlfriend, Amanda. So this is a worthy wand here. If you're watching, if you're listening, sorry, you can't see. So she does, um, all these beautiful, intentional uh, jewelry, like bracelets and necklaces. So she's, Amanda's not, she's the, the woman behind the brand, but the brand is Worthy Wands. And so all of her content around Worthy Wands is very clear and it's beautiful and it's stunning and you connect with it. But I'm the brand for karamccarran.com, obviously, right? So you're connecting with me directly. If you're selling something, you want to make sure that it's an alignment with you. Like there's nothing worse than creating a brand where you reject it in a year because it wasn't an alignment with you. And then you have to go back and do all of it over again. You know, like the content company is a reflection of Ken and I. Um, so for us, like I don't reject it. I want, I usually like to update logos and things like that, but, um, and it, it's probably time to start thinking about updating a little bit again, but you know, that brand really reflects us, our core mess, our core values, our mission statement, all of those things really reflect us, but that's part of the brand. So we talk about branding and color schemes and messaging and look. Um, one of the things I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients is help create their brand because 
it can be overwhelming. It's overwhelming for me when I'm doing it for myself. So I know if you're a new business owner, it can be very, very daunting. So that's, that's one thing I work with my one-on-one clients. Um, then we talk about copywriting. Obviously I'm obsessed with this concept. Um, the content company, we don't do as much copywriting as we do content writing, but copywriting is, you know, content is king, even though I resist that and design is queen. They, they both need one another, but the way that you create your messaging, you know, like, are you, for me, I'm, I'm very direct in my content writing, um, or in my con- my copywriting, I'm, I'm very direct, but you don't have a lot of time. We know this, like you have under three seconds to get somebody's attention. And so we talk about that, you know, what are your, what are your blog posts look like? How do you approach your copywriting? Um, we talk about website design. That's another thing I, I help my one-on-one clients with is website design. I've designed many, many websites. Um, I use a program called Wix.com. It is the best For me, uh, it's very high ranking SEO. It's very user-friendly. I think it's by far the best um, platform there is for website design if you're a newbie and you're doing it yourself. We talk, uh, because, so I just want to go back to the the website, like that's your calling card. That's your salesperson when you're not available. So you always want to be thinking like, how can I build rapport in this, with this person who's reading my website? Like so many people talk about themselves throughout their website. People don't give a shit. They want to know what's in it for them. Um, Let them know what problem you're solving when they hit the website. It's that, that straightforward. Um, And then the, the fifth part of module one or month one is going to be financial. Now, this might, some of you, your butt may have puckered when I said that, but how the fuck are you going to get anywhere if you don't know how to map out your revenue, right? Like, what do you want to make in a year? Let's talk about that. What do you, you know, what are your expenses for your business? Are you consultancy? Are you making, you know, widgets? Like you need to know that stuff before you even get going because, you know, year one will go by really quick. And all of a sudden you're looking at your financials and thinking, what the fuck? I know I made money. And that's happened to us where we're like, I know we made money, well, where the hell did it go? Um, the other, so then the next month is module two or month two, and we go through mindset stuff. This to me, so like we're building the foundation of the business discussions and getting you kind of geared to start building that business, but none of that makes any sense. And the reason I put mindset into the second one is because you're going to be all fired up and geared up and ready to go, but come month two or, or not two in your business, but month two with me, we're talking about mindset stuff because none of it will work if your mindset is not squared away. If you're thinking in terms of scarcity, if you're thinking that there's never enough and who's going to buy my product or who's going to like, none of what we just did in, in the first module is going to matter. And I've seen it happen over and over and over. And it happens to me. Like, here's the thing, you guys, it's, I think that people get this idea that once you've done some mindset work or coaching, then you're, you're good to go. And that's the end. It's so, it's so not true. Like even in my mastermind, I'm leveled up, right? I'm going to a whole other plateau of, of business ownership with the, she's the owner of Karen McCarran brand. And I'm resisting the shit out of it. But here is the difference. Here's what happens. I know that I'm doing it. I know that I'm resisting, but I fucking do it anyway. How did I do it? I booked an Airbnb. I could have sat at home for another two, three weeks mulling around thinking, how am I going to do this? Instead, I just, and and that's practice. Like that didn't come. I mean, it's natural to me to go into masculine, but it's also natural for me to sit around for a little bit longer than necessary and think about it. So what did I do? I'm, I'm resisting. I'm thinking the same thoughts that you're thinking, who's going to hire me? Nobody wants to work with me, blah, blah, blah. I don't know anything. What do I know? And then I say, no, f- knock it off. Tiny mind, shut your face. Thank you. I appreciate your help, but I'm actually good. And I'm going to get my ass up and I'm going to take action. The, the, the quickest way to feel like you're doing something is by taking bold, decisive action. It doesn't have to be the right fucking thing just do something. And my something was booking this Airbnb and coming here and spending, you know, two days recording two days, um, you know, doing all like writing. I've mapped out the entire three month program. Now I'm fucking fired up. Now I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, Holy shit. Like this now, when I say how much things cost, I can look at my program and be like, yeah, that's a steal. If I could have paid for that and avoided 20 years, essentially of the, the ups and downs. Now you're not, this is not, let me be clear. 
You're not avoiding it completely, but you're definitely going to, there's there, you can do pivots, right? Like I'm, I could do this, taking my company to six and seven figures the hard way or pay someone who's done it and help me do it the less hard way. Which did I choose? I chose to pay for it because I don't want to waste five. I don't want to burn five years trying to figure this out. Coaching is new for me. Like I've been coaching for years, but coaching as a business is only a year and a half old for me. Do I want to burn through another three or four years trying to figure this fucking shit out? No. And you shouldn't either. I've built six figure company. I understand the mechanics. I know. So for me, but again, when it comes back down to it, if you can have all the tools you want, but if your mindset's not on board, none of the other stuff is going to work. So mindset is we spend a lot of time. So we talk about NLP. We talk about spirituality, um, energetic spirituality. We talk about chakras. We're going to talk about the masculine feminine energy. We're going to talk about diet. We're going to talk about meditation. We're going to talk about um, emotional freedom techniques, like all of it. Because again, it's like you have to stand guard at your, at the, the, the gate of your mind, and the way that you do that are these different different things I just mentioned. It doesn't come naturally. Our brains are created and designed to keep us safe. And as soon as you feel resistance to something, your brain's like, oh, she doesn't feel safe. I better get in there. And that's when tiny mind goes and makes a mess. I'm grateful for my subconscious and I'm grateful for my reptilian brain to keep me out of trouble 100%. But I'm not in trouble when I'm uncomfortable doing a live event. I'm not in trouble when I, I'm not feeling like I want to write content. I just need to do it. So you need, part of it is we start to, we'll start to learn and I'll help you feel those triggers. Like in my body, I can feel when I'm full of shit and when I need to take action or when something's really scary. And I, and I need to chill out. So that's, that's module three. Module four is all about execution mode, right? So we've created the, your business map. We've discovered what you want to do, how you're going to do it, the kind of money you want to make. We've started to work on the mindset and, and keep that nice and tight. Now it's go time. So some of the things we talk about are sales, map them out. How many calls and, and how many outreaches do you need to do to get wherever you need to get? What does that look like? Are you doing pay-per-click ads? Or are you doing SEO only? What are the steps to get you to the sales parts that you want to get to or the sales numbers that you want to get to? Plan your launch, right? Obviously things are a little bit weird right now. We can't do in-person launches, but if you're, let's say you're a store, you're going to want to plan some type of virtual launch. Let's say you're, you know, whatever, Whatever the thing is, you're going to want to plan that launch, do a press release, get really excited, get people on board. This is important. It's a big fucking deal. You're starting a business. It's a huge deal. You want to celebrate it. Um, what steps do you need to take to make it happen? How many clients and customers do you need in order to hit your goals, right? Like I know for me, for this year, for my goals, I have 60 spots for women for the entire year. That is it. No more. Only 60 right? But I have to, but that's it. I won't take any more, um, probably in the first year, just because I want to make sure everything's perfect and everyone's well taken care of. But I know exactly what my numbers are really, really down. Like I know them very, very well. Um, how will you stay balanced in the masculine feminine, right? So that is part of execution because what's going to happen is you're going to go hard on your masculine and hunter mode. You're going to go hard on that energy and you can burn out like, trust me, you can burn out. So making sure that you know when to turn it off, when to take breaks, when to calm down a bit. Um, and then that's it. Lift off. That's the final thing is, you know, everybody will have an opportunity to share what their business vision is and goals and everything. And what will be cool is we'll get it at the start of the program and at the end of the program, just to see how far people have come. So that's the, she's the owner accelerator group. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm rolling that out really quickly. Um, I just have to get it, get it sorted and get, <clears throat> excuse me, get all the videos created and all that fun stuff. But that's basically what we're looking at for 2021. So I'm super excited. I hope you're super excited. Um, there is still going to be an opportunity if you do want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's an opportunity for that as well. But again, I'm only taking, um, I think four more clients on that level. And then that is the cutoff for that as well. And that's the thing, like, Part of what we'll talk about is, you know, firing clients and letting clients go and being okay with all those things. Like there's so many parts that we, that, that will come up where you're going to have questions and, you know, at the end of the day, 
when you show your vulnerability and I don't know how to do something, people will help you. If you act like you know everything, no one's going to help you. That's that simple. And this, this accelerator group is really created so that, um, you know, basically you do the videos, you do the homework, and then you come to the coaching calls with questions and we hot seat every call. So, you know, we share our wins, we share our issues and questions that we have, and then I will coach you through those live. Um, but always come with an open heart, always come with open questions, always come with the idea that I don't know everything. And this is a group of people, women in particular, who are going to help me figure it out as a, as a collective. So I'm super, super excited. Um, podcast is going strong as well. So if you want to be a guest, please, please send me an email. There's lots of room. I'm doing three podcasts a week now. So there's tons of room for guests. Um, so if any of that is of interest to you, let me know. But hopefully some of you are excited and you're going to join the accelerator and, um, and we'll get going. I love you so, so, so much. Um, also, I just want to remind you that now you can go to www.karamccarran.com. Um, if you go to she's the owner.com, it will redirect you to my new site, but um, keep that, you know, top of mind. There's a lot of uh, new content being added there all the time. I hope you have a great day guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.